welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. This week we have a cute little bit of festive decor for the bathroom, a somewhat neglected room in the house when it comes to Christmas decorations. So this week we're going to make this really cute little Santa jacket to cover up the bathroom tissue. It's quick, it's cute, you can perch it on the back of the toilet, maybe a countertop or even some shelves, wherever you tend to keep your extra bathroom tissue. And it's a nice little way to cover it up and add some cute festivity to the bathroom at the same time. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a little Santa jacket bathroom tissue cover together. In order to make our Santa bathroom tissue roll covers, we're going to be using acrylic medium size 4 yarn, about 75 grams in red, 20 grams in black, and a small amount in yellow. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. Today's hook is a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. You may also want a measuring tape so you can keep track of the size of your cover. And if you aren't already subscribed, be sure to click that button and the bell so you don't miss an upcoming tutorial. And once you've got all that together, let's get started. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. You're going to chain one to complete your cinch circle and hold it steady. Then you're going to work eight half double crochet into your cinch circle. Remember to work them over top of your little short tail because that's how we're going to cinch our circle shut when we're done. Once you have eight half double crochet, grab the little short tail, cinch it up nice and tight, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet we made to complete row one. So you should have eight stitches at the end of that row. Chain one to begin row two. We're going to half double crochet in the same stitch that we joined in. And then we're going to work two half double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. So two, two half double crochet into each stitch. I'll catch up with you at the end. At the end of row two, you should have a false stitch left. So you've worked a half double crochet into the stitch that you joined in, two half double crochet into each of the next seven stitches, and that leaves us with this thing we call the false stitch. And you should also have 15 half double crochet. So we're going to work a half double crochet into that false stitch. That will close up the gaps in our circle, and then we can join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet we made. Row three, we're going to chain one to begin. We're going to half double crochet in the same stitch that we joined in. We're going to half double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to repeat this little pattern seven times. Two half double crochet into the next stitch. Half double crochet once into the stitch after that. Repeat that six more times and I'll catch up with you at the end. At the end of row three, you'll find you have 23 stitches and then this one little half or this false stitch left over. So you're going to work your 24th stitch into that. So you've got a half double crochet to begin, a half double crochet next to that, our little repeating pattern all the way around, and you've finished your last little set with two half double crochet, half double crochet into the next stitch, your false stitch, you're going to work the half double crochet that you would have used at the beginning, but into this stitch instead, and that's what gives us a nice solid circle. Join with a slip stitch to the first one, and that is row three completed. You have 24 stitches. Row four, we're going to keep doing the same little thing, so we're still increasing and we're still using that little cheat at the end. We're going to half double crochet into the first stitch, so the just stitch that we joined in, and remember this little false stitch beside it, that's where we're going to technically work what would be the other stitch. So if we were starting the repeater pattern here, this would be two together, but we're going to end up putting it in at the end of the row. So you're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next two stitches, so ignoring our little repeater for now. And this is the repeater for row four. You're going to work two half double crochet into the first stitch of a set, and there's seven of them all together, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So you're going to repeat that six more times, two half double crochet into the next stitch, 
and half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. I'll catch up with you at the end. When you finish your last set of two half double crochet worked into the same stitch and then a half double crochet into each of the next two, you'll have your little false stitch left and that's where we're going to work our last half double crochet of the row. So this would count as the other half double crochet for the very first set we made. But we put it in at the end so that we end up closing up that circle. Join with a slip stitch. You should have 32 stitches all the way around. We've got another row of increasing to do. We're going to chain one. Half double crochet into the same stitch as joining. And half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So we're still going to use our little cheat method. And here's the repeater pattern that you're going to do seven times. Two half double crochet into the first stitch of the set. And then half double crochet into each of the next three. Repeat that all the way around and I'll catch up with you at the end of row five. At the end of row five, after your last little repeater, you should have one thing left and that's the false stitch. You're going to work your 40th stitch into that. Count them up, you should have 40. And then you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet we made in that row. So 40 stitches at the end of row five. We have one more row of increasing to do, but it's a little bit different. We're going to chain one and instead of using half double crochet, we're going to use single crochet now. So we're going to single crochet into the same stitch that we joined in. So single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to work a single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So we're still going to use our little cheat. So that's a single crochet in the same stitches joining and a single crochet into each of the next four. The repeater pattern you're going to do seven times is two single crochet into the next stitch and single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So repeat that all the way around and I'll catch up with you at the end of row six. At the end of row six, once you've finished your last little repeater, you're going to find your false stitch. It's pretty small because single crochet is pretty small. But you're going to work your 48th stitch into the false stitch we're not going to join our row because from here on out we're going to be working in the round. But before we continue, you might want to grab your measuring tape and measure up the circumference, or I should say the diameter of your circle. So your diameter should be between four and a half and five inches. So anywhere between four and a half and five inches is just fine. And if you want, you can take a stitch marker or a safety pin and just mark the last or first stitch of row six. So just put a stitch marker or safety pin there, leave it there for reference because that's how you know that that's sort of where every row begins and ends. But we're not joining our rows anymore, we're just going to work in single crochet around and around and around. So you're going to single crochet directly into the first stitch that was the beginning of row six and you're just going to start to work a stitch, a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. So this is going to turn your flat disc into a bit of a bowl shape and that's exactly what we want. And you're going to continue working around and around and around until the side of your little cover measures approximately four inches. A little bit more is probably better because you want a little bit of give. So maybe between four and four and a half inches and that's about 10 to 12 centimeters. I'm going to work for a little ways and I'll show you how it's coming along after a couple rows just so you can sort of see the curve in the project and then I'll turn you loose and we can work until our projects measure about 12 centimeters or four and a half inches tall. So I'm a few more rows past the row six start stop. So there's my little uh, marker to indicate 
the end of row six, and that was the end of the top. It's now turning into a little bit of a cap. If you find that yours is a little more curved, like you have a little bit of a more of a bowl shape happening, don't worry because it's eventually going to come back in. It's just that our stitch tensions all differ a little bit. So if you tend to be a little on the loose side, it'll be a little bit wider. And if, you be, if you're on the tighter side like I am, then it will start to close in. Either way, you can always grab a roll of toilet paper and just close it over the top to make sure A, it fits, and B, it's starting to curve down. And a little bit of rounded give up there is just fine because it's the roll that sort of fattens it up and makes it look like <laughs> there's a little bit of a Santa standing there. So I would say you want a total of 24 rows. Now you want it to be at least four and a half inches or 12 centimeters um, from the top. So, so the whole edge needs to be four and a half or 12 inches or 12 centimeters. So from about the end of row six down. And because our stitch tension and our yarn thickness is going to vary, you can add as many rows as you need to get that measurement. So I'm going to aim for the for 24 rows in total. So that's row one that we started with over the way over here. And I'm going to work to the end of row 24 and that should be the right measurement for me. But like I said, you want to make sure that you are aiming for the measurement, not necessarily the row count. All of the stitches will be the same, so your stitch count will always be 48 stitches per row. You shouldn't be adding or subtracting any stitches. There's no more decreasing or increasing in this project. You're just going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. And because we're working in the round, we won't have a seam. So there will be no front or back or wrong or right side to your little project. And that makes it look nice and even. All right, I'm going to turn you loose. I'll see you guys at the end of row 24. All right, I just completed row 20. So four rows short of 24. And I've measured it. And between the bottom edge and my little pin that marks where row 6 is, I am four and a half inches or about 12 centimeters from that marker to that marker. So I want to stop because that will fit over top of a little roll of both bathroom tissue. And if you're unsure, you can always just stop and literally try it on over top. So that fits just perfectly. So that makes 20 rows for me. But like I said, you're more concerned about measurement than you are about the number of rows. So because our stitch tension and our yarn can vary, go for measurement, not so much rows. So 20 rows does it for me. When you get to the end of the measurement that you need, just slip stitch into the stitch next to the one you finished in to join. Make sure that you're in alignment with that beginning and end of row six because that tells you sort of where your, your even start stop is. And then you can fasten off. Grab your yarn needle and flip the inside of your little cover so that you can sort of see the inside of it. And you're just going to weave your tail in through, back and forth through some of the stitches on the inside of your little cover. Once you've fastened off and woven in your end, you should have what looks like a cute little hat. And this should fit over top of a toilet roll, just like that. It should be completely covered. And now we can move on to the belt. You're going to take your black yarn now and begin with a slip knot. And you're going to chain 50, five zero, 50 chains. Once you have 50 chains, you're going to skip the first chain from the hook, half double crochet into the next chain, and you're going to half double crochet into each chain all the way across. So you'll have 49 half double crochets at the end of row one of the belt. You should have 49 stitches all the way across your little belt. You can leave yourself a longish tail, quite a long tail. You might want, I'd say, 60 centimeters or two feet worth of yarn here because we're going to sew our entire belt to our little Santa jacket <laughs> with that tail. 
So a nice long tail for sewing. It's always better to have too much sewing tail than not enough. It makes it easier to sew. And you can take a moment to weave in that short tail. Now we're going to make a little buckle for him. So you're going to take your yellow yarn and make a slip knot. We're going to chain six to begin. Once you have six chains, skip the first chain from the hook, single crochet into the second, and single crochet all the way back to the beginning. So at the end of this first little row, you'll have five stitches. We're going to chain four. This chain four counts as a double crochet chain one. Flip your work, and we're going to skip the first stitch because that's what our chains come out of. We're going to skip the next stitch, and we're going to find the middle stitch, the third stitch there. We're going to double crochet into that stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the last stitch. So you should have something that looks like this. You're going to chain one and turn, and the last thing you're going to do is just single crochet across the top. So we're going to single crochet into the top of the double crochet we finished row two with. We're going to single crochet into the space underneath that chain one. Single crochet into the top of the double crochet in the middle of our little buckle. Single crochet into the next space, and because we're dealing with a bunch of chains, you're going to flip the chain so you can see them. You're going to count up one, two, three, find that third chain and single crochet into that chain. And you should have something that looks like that. You can snip your work. So snip your yarn. You don't really need much tail. Fasten off. Take your yarn needle and weave in both of your short tails. Now we want to put our belt together. So you're going to take your long belt strap and your buckle, and you're going to press your belt strap in from behind, go up and over the little middle tong there, and back out the other side. And then your little buckle can slide across your belt strap, just like a real one. Then we're going to attach it to our little Santa jacket. So this is up to you. You can have it sit low, you can have it sit in the middle, sit a little high, wherever you want it. What you want to do is make sure that it's going to stretch a bit and it's going to reach around to the end. So we made it one stitch wider than the circumference of our little uh, cover, just so it would be able to fit around. It's going to stretch a little bit, so don't worry if it's a little bit pinched to start. You can keep your belt buckle on your belt. Bring both of the ends together, thread up this long tail, and to start, you're going to sew a couple stitches back and forth just to connect the front or the two ends of your belt buckle. So I know it's kind of hard to see because my buckle is black, or I should say my belt is black, but you're just going to sew the two ends together with that long tail to start. Nothing fancy, just grab the edges of both ends Maybe go back and forth a couple times just to make sure that it doesn't want to come undone. And make sure both your edges are even. So when you give it a tug, it should be connected. Then you can fit the whole thing over top of the cover. If you want, you can pin it into place. Or you can just hold it and eyeball it, or you can decide what row you want to sew it along. I'm going to start where I fastened off. This is going to be the back of my little cover. And then all you're going to do is just, you can sew right through the fabric if you want, or you can pick up a stitch. So pick up a piece of a stitch along the back and the corresponding edge of your belt strap. You're going to sew all the way around. You can do every single stitch or every other stitch. It depends on how well you want this to be attached. If this is going to get a lot of activity, like if you think somebody might 
want to take it off and play with it, then make sure you sew down every single stitch so that your belt buckle or your belt doesn't really want to move around. You're going to sew all the way around one side and then when you get back to the beginning you're going to hop over and sew all the way around the top side. If you run out of yarn, don't worry, get back to the beginning, fasten off and then just cut yourself a nice long strip of black yarn to sew the top. So knot it either on the in underside of your belt and start sewing or you can just knot it on the inside of your cover because that doesn't really get seen much. When you get around to your belt buckle, just skip it. So just peel your belt buckle up a little bit, skip underneath it, and then continue sewing the next stitch. So you're just going to sort of skip underneath it and continue sewing out the other side. And that will lie flat when you're done. Once you're done sewing, you want to knot your yarn, make a small little knot at the side of your belt, maybe twice, just so it doesn't come undone. And then you can weave the tail in through some of those stitches along your belt strap, back and forth a few times. It's not going to show because it's all dark yarn. And once you're convinced that it's not going to come undone, you can trim any excess. And once you've got your belt sewn on, you're done. It will fit over top of a little roll of bathroom tissue and it will help add a little bit of decor to the bathroom. Now if you want, this is completely optional, if you've got some scrap yarn lying around, like some big fluffy, this is roving, or maybe you've got some wild tinsely type yarn, you can always add a little bit of an extra bit of white to the bottom of your jacket. So if you're going to do that, doesn't matter the thickness of your yarn, um, especially if you're using something sort of textured, like a chunky yarn, because you want to make that one row of single crochet look a bit sort of thick like fur. So you'd put a slip knot on your hook. You could join with a single crochet. So I'm joining my yarn at the back along the bottom. And then just work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around the edge. And as you can see, this is really thick, fluffy yarn. So it's going to be a lot bigger than the regular stitches on the rest of my little jacket. But that's okay because it's going to look like fluffy fur. So this is something you can do. It's just optional. It's just a single row of single crochet using um, a textured yarn, a novelty yarn, something like that crazy silver tinsel I have, or this um, chunky or bulky weight, soft, fluffy white roving yarn. Uh, you can try blanket yarn if you've got that burnout blanket yarn. If you want to experiment, I recommend go ahead. You can use the same hook size and just add a little bit of interest to the bottom of your jacket. When you get back to the beginning, you can work your last stitch in the same stitch that you fastened off. So the stitch you slip stitched into, that will just help keep any kind of a jog from happening in your yarn. Then you just slip stitch to the first stitch to join Fasten off and weave in your tail. And that's what the little Santa jacket looks like with a bit of faux fur trim. <laughs> and there you have it. A cute little Santa cover for the bathroom. A little something to hide the toilet paper on the back of the toilet <laughs> and add a little decoration to the neglected rooms in the house at the same time. We hope you had fun making this along with us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week everyone. Bye!